I didn't bring headphones. God damn it. <laughs> mm. The boys, I gotta tell you. I am waiting for the day where I set this whole thing up and don't have to like walk over three or four times to turn something off that I totally forgot about. Uh, da, da, da. <coughs> Seems like our mic is a little bit low or maybe I'm just talking too low. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's about that time. This is uh, Zach ZYZ. Uh, I've been editing this novel live for the past five days or so. That's what, another thing that I fucking forgot. So let me waddle over there. I'm gonna turn the mic up a tiny bit and uh, then we're going to set it to day five. Uh, so we're on to chapter five there, averaging about uh, 1.2 chapters a day in this very long book, which is about uh, 700 pages long. All right, hold on. Let me uh, change the date. Okay, and I also gave myself a little more gain in them old headphones. So, yeah, we're out here. Then, uh, I think uh, at the end of this whole shit, we might, uh, if I feel like it, we'll go straight to pumping iron. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. You know it's, uh, nobody watches this, so I can do whatever weird shit I feel like. And uh, that's the story of my life. Like, nobody uh, reads these books for the most part. So I can cram in whatever really weird shit that I feel like it. So let's do a, a beverage check. Today I'm trying a cold brutus. It's a nitro uh, brewed cold brew coming out of straight out of Vermont, uh, which I have not been to in uh, low these many years. Yeah, I um, shout out to Spathiwa right there. He's on top of it. He wants to know where to coffee at. And I want to know where my army at. Shout out to Spathiwa. I guess Jordan O is in... Uh, a pool of his own blood, unconscious and confused. When the cops came and got him, and they put him in his van, he was so tired and naked, and he couldn't find his hand. And, you know, that's how Jordan O does. All right, so I should start seeing chats at some point in the iPad. That's been really helpful. Uh, all right, so Spathiwa said, lovely. Fucking, I'm gonna scroll up, there it is. Yeah, the manual scrolling in that app is uh, not stellar. Um. Let me see. Oh, there's Jordan. No, yeah, he's alive after all. So yeah, let me um, let me give you a idea of what I think about cold Brutus. So it's a nitro coffee. Smells good. Not much to say in the uh, taste department. It's not uh, particularly strong or weak or whatever. It's just, um, it's just cold brew. So, uh, yeah, nothing to particularly recommend it there, but I'll see how fucked up it gets me. And then we have also, uh, the supermarket started carrying this new brand of girl water. It's a uh, lemon cherry. Let's see. It's not good. Not good at all. There we go. <laughs> Shoutouts to uh, uh, Spathiwa and uh, Impulse Filters, aka Jordan O, religious viewers of the Gravid stream. Um, 
So uh, Impulse Filters is drinking Mango Peach Natty Light Seltzer. Did you put seltzer into, nat into Natty Light? What the fuck? Uh, Should have gone with the cherry lime. Ah, uh, the cherry lime is... Actually, it goes kind of well with the coffee, now that I'm seeing it. I should just mix these together. Get like carbonated cold brew, cherry lime, whatever. God, some barista's head would fucking explode. His dick like blows right the fuck off. Kills like eight people with penis shrapnel. Hell yeah. So, uh, it comes as a seltzer. Huh. Wait, Natty Light Water. Huh. I don't know that natural light. I thought that was just like, uh, the cheapest beer that you could possibly buy. They put too much of a piece chased in here. Yeah, like I've, um, if you're drinking girl water, uh, generally I think Spindrift is about the best. They hit like the right, um, level. Wasn't Natty Light skunky as fuck? Maybe I'm thinking of some whole different thing. But, uh, yeah, Spindrift seems to me to be the best girl water. They put like a tiny little bit of fruit in there. It's got like two calories or something like that. But, uh, you'll burn those off, um, just putting on your makeup. Uh, so... There we go. All right. Let's, uh, so, uh, I remembered the last part of this chapter being super fucked up. Well, so if you're following every day on ZachZYZ.com, when I finish a chapter, I post the differential, uh, of, uh, the edits so you can see, like, what changed. And that, to me, is kind of interesting to read through. But, of course, I'm obsessed, uh, with this work, uh, because I'm the author. So for other people, it might be boring as fuck. And that's okay. Uh, not everybody has to like the shit that's going on. But another thing that's neat is that we have a new cover uh, for uh, this. Hold on, let me let me see. Did I put it on a screen or something like that? Uh, let's see. I hope I don't have any creepy shit on the Safari here. Don't keep new Safari. And then Let's see if I can throw this up here. Yeah, I think it's all pretty innocuous. So if you go to the Zach ZYZ Twitter, uh, we show that we're fucking live. That's great. And then um, here's the new cover for fucking Gravid right here. I really like how this cover went out. I just wanted like a temporary throw up um, because I'm putting the, the novel on Wattpad or whatever. Um, so I just wanted like a really temporary throw up cover uh, that I didn't have to fucking worry about. But I really like this one. Uh, honestly, like this could, I don't know, maybe, maybe it could be like a permanent car. I, I doubt it, you know, to tell you the truth. Um, but, uh, I'm a big fan. I like, uh, I like the, the two-tone thing that's happening there. I think it's relatively striking. Uh, yeah. So impulse filters. So, yeah. So I actually asked my girlfriend and she liked it better than triangles and she's way smarter at this kind of shit than I am. So if a girl says, get rid of the fucking triangles, you get rid of the triangles. So what, what was, we started off here, right? So this was just the, um, this like very simple, uh, almost like 70s throwback, um, you know, uh, type cover right here. Where I kind of like this one because it uh, gives you the idea of like a sentinel-like face or whatever. So I, I actually enjoyed this one. But like things that people didn't like about this one is it's, it's definitely like off center. There's a slight curve uh, to that black line, and I think um, there when you're doing design, you can have elements that are radically off center, but they can't be like a tiny bit off center, right? If things are a tiny bit off center, um, it's, it like uh, initiates uh, autism mode in people, and they're like, ah, I don't like it. Um, if something's like way off center, like obviously off center for a reason, they're like, okay, that's, that's part of the, uh, decision that they've made here. Um, but like a teeny little, there's, you know, it's like that uncanny valley thing. Um, so yeah, I like that one. Uh, and the other one, we had like a bunch of triangles and shit, but, um, it didn't work out. So good God almighty. We're on live at it. I can see myself right here on Twitter, uh, as we speak, this shit's going on right there. So, uh, shout outs to that. Let's get back to um, the editing. Uh, hopefully it's not like playing audio of me, playing audio of me, playing audio of me, and playing audio of me, um, which is what happens when you have a feedback loop. Um, yeah, so like good progress to make a new cover. Uh, I went through and put the site, uh, I put the first five chapters or so onto a service called Wattpad, um, which is meant for people to like read aspiring authors and shit like that. 
Um, I, I've never had any success with Wattpad, but I haven't really put any effort into it. So you can read uh, the chapters one by one on uh, zaxyyz.com or on wattpad.com, or you can just watch the YouTube thing or whatever. A lot of shit going on. But why am I telling y'all that the two people watching this already know almost all this shit? Let's get down into it. Uh, so what happened thus far? Um, so I actually have a document that I need to read through that has like a lot of my uh, goals for the characters and so forth. I, I realized I wrote this thing and then I forgot everything that was in it. Um, so there are goals for each of the characters in the rewrite. Uh, I think we're doing an okay job with uh, Malcolm Lewis not being a retarded wigger uh, this time around. Uh, Lassa, we haven't had much of an opportunity to delve into, but that character needs a fair bit of work there. Uh, Freya herself is coming out uh, much cuntier uh, this uh, time around, which is exactly what I want. Um, I think a lot of her character arc is going to deal with uh, learning to be not such a bitch, um, but we'll, we'll see how successful she is in that endeavor, given the plot that I have already written. Um, but thus far, so uh, we uh, met Freya Jokla at her high school. Uh, we saw her get punched in the eye by this girl. And then she just laid down in the rain. She just took it. Uh, and everybody was like, what the fuck is wrong with her? And they bounced. So somebody saw her laying in the rain. Or lying in the rain. I guess laying is... I hate fucking lay and lie. Fuck you, English. Um, but they saw her lying in the rain. And came down and got her. Dragged her to the principal's office. The principal summoned uh, the mothers of Freya and the girl that hit her. Uh, and uh, then there was another fight in the office where Freya's mother... Just went raw dog on uh, Patricia Dowd, the mother of Tammy Dowd, the girl who hit uh, Freya. And just uh, whew, tore her down from her head to the ground. Yeah. Um, so uh, as a consequence, both uh, Patricia Dowd and Lassa Jokla are in jail right now. Freya was supposed to bail her mother out, but uh, the way that uh, the courts work out, she was not able to do that. And after sitting at home alone... Uh, she has decided uh, she's had enough of this shit. She wants to drown herself. Uh, so she, at this point, she has gone out to the river, uh, spent some time reminiscing about um, why uh, why she got into this place, how all of her friends have kind of moved on for her, uh, how much she misses her father. And uh, yeah, she's hopped on into that old river. And as she was about to hop into the river, a meteorite has crashed down behind her into the riverbank. And uh, she might not have even hopped in if not for this old riverbank, uh, this old meteorite is what I want to say. Uh, so after a lot of struggling in the water, we got a lot of assistance um, from the uh, from the people in the chat right there who uh, gave us some tips about um, how ice is cold and uh, <laughs> rocks are sharp and other other things to consider uh, when writing a uh, toss in the rapids type stream. Mm. And uh, yeah, this coffee's growing on me, mostly because I need caffeine, and my body is like, I don't care if that's a dude's dick, drink it. Um, uh, I wonder how many people we have to have watching this before people start getting irate when I say um, shit like drinking a dude's dick. So there's definitely a critical mass where somebody will be, not cool, man. It's very homophobic. Um, and then I, uh, you know, I have many cards I can play against those accusations but uh yeah you know while we got like three people we can just relax and be human beings and uh i'm a big fan oh there's pcap oh shit yeah yeah <laughs> uh, there's i think there's a bit later in this book about how the only way that old construction workers can relate to each other is by calling them themselves gay uh and if you've ever been on a construction site like there is a continual banter back and forth uh, of anybody who's like 55 or older where they're like every interaction that they have with other people involves some kind of accusation that the other guy is gay. And all these guys are like married and uh, have uh, probably never encountered a dick in that. But it's just the way that they act all the time. I don't know why we're fucking wired this way, man. It's weird. Maybe we'll write another book where we delve into... Uh, repressed homosexuality deeply. Uh, one thing I noticed yesterday, uh, so I was taking a look at whatever, a lot of fucking people are watching this on Periscope, and uh, it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, Restream doesn't get an accurate count, 
for the number of Periscope viewers. Um, I think because they're just rendering on the Twitter page or whatever. But yeah, like, um, it's pretty wild. Uh, oh shit, so Peter Cap's kid uh, woke him up like 45 minutes ago. Well, shout outs to uh, little P Cap, uh, teeny Cap <laughs> over there. I'm glad somebody smart is like perpetuating the species because it ain't going to be me. Uh, you know, one, the, the smart part. And then two, <laughs> uh, I'm probably never going to have no cheer in of my own. But shout out to Peter Cap fighting the good fight right there. But uh, P Cap Mini. <laughs> I love it. That's fucking fantastic. One of my oldest friends actually uh, just had a baby uh, recently and we've been out of touch for like the last two years or something like that and she and I uh, had had kind of like a fling uh, for a little bit and everything so it was it was one of those like uh, uh, where your brain doesn't know what to think when just like looking at pictures of her with this baby and everything but uh, shout out to her for uh, successfully having a child I know she had like a difficult road to get there and uh, she looks happy in uh, pictures and stuff so I'm, I'm real happy for her right there uh, I think, uh, I think she is, uh, there's a dedication in one of my books to her, uh, because she was like a, uh, a really like fantastic influence on my old life. So life is good, man. I'm glad that, uh, all this is going down and, uh, people are around here. All right. But all this, all this blogging is literally just me being like anxious to start editing. So let's fucking get down to it right here. I got to do the work. So, uh, let's see. Freya was soaked and shivering, but she had to look. She waded out to the sandbar, carefully planting her feet with each step. She had no intention... Yeah, too many she's. She waded out to the sandbar. Uh, vlogging. Ugh. No, just blogging is pejorative enough for me. Carefully planting her feet with each step, she had no intention of slipping back into deep water ever again. The crater had filled in. Slipping back in ever again. Yeah, let's cut out the water. Uh, she had no intention of slipping back in ever again. So I don't, I don't know like how many people here have a um, serious suicide attempt uh, to their credit. Probably all of them. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, there's definitely a, um, uh, sort of a refractory period afterward where you're like, oh yeah, I'm definitely never going to kill myself or whatever. Um, <laughs> that, uh, it's not always the case that you're never going to kill yourself, but for a, uh, tiny period of time after a serious attempt or really any brush of death, uh, there's this liminal phase where you really do think that you can make positive changes in your life. And uh, sadly, it's, it's often uh, very fleeting, um, just as, as like when you hit rock bottom and try to quit drugs and so forth. All those moments, in those moments, it seems like so easy to make a change and be somebody else um, or to fix your life and so forth. And when that evaporates, you're left with um, this realization that um, that difficult, uh, that like freedom from difficulty is always transitory and the actual work of changing is incredibly fucking difficult and constant and comes at a time where you don't have the motivation to do it. It's really working through a lack of any sort of motivation. So just in this one line there, this intention, no intention of uh, slipping back in ever again, um, really reminds me a little bit of that. So the crater had filled in with dark water. Tentatively, she reached down. Uh, I don't like tentatively there. She touched the surface. Yeah, that's much better. She touched the surface tentatively, afraid it would be boiling hot, but the water was, but the water, I almost sounded like I was from Maine myself there, water, uh, but the water was only slightly warmer than the river. She groped in the pit and felt something hard. Oh, I bet she did. Bending down into the water, there we go. Uh, she closed her head around, okay. It's not like really horny when I was writing uh, this chapter.
Oh, shout outs to Panda from Mars. Uh, just uh, popped up in the chat. And uh, Jordano with the eggplant. Yeah, we're editing a novel live right here. Uh, this is going to be the next Hugh Howie type shit, I'm sure. <laughs> no, but it might be something. You know, I'm, I do a fair bit of this. Uh, this, this is uh, one of the better novels that I've ever written. Maybe not the best, but um, it's definitely the one that I'm editing right now. Uh, so Panda from Mars says, are you self-published or have you gone the more, uh, traditional route? Uh, so I put out two, uh, my first two novels through a very small publisher, uh, which full disclosure, I, uh, co-owned half of it right there. I had been working in publishing for about 10 years at that point. And, uh, we had, uh, we put out three books and one of them was very successful, uh, and it was not one of mine, <laughs> but, uh, but I had a lot of fun in the process there. Um, so I know a fair bit about the publishing industry. Um, like all the other books that I've put out, I've done all my own cover design, all my own typesetting, and uh, obviously all my own marketing, which is why we have uh, all four of you uh, here in the chat right now. But uh, yeah, I really love uh, every part of putting together a book, even this editing right now, which I love a lot more because uh, people are with me on this journey. Uh, previously editing is a dark and lonely proposition right there. Uh, but I would say that, um, I'm definitely, uh, have a lot more books out, uh, than your average author, uh, quality, ooh, uh, I don't know. I'm, you know, like, I don't think I can really objectively rate my own quality, but I definitely think the shit that I'm putting out is better than, um, a lot of, a lot of what's commercially available. And no, no diss on them or whatever. It's just this is specifically the kind of weird shit that I like uh, that gets me off. And uh, a lot of what I read uh, commercially doesn't really do it for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I, um, uh, only guy I know with a corpus. <laughs> I have a bunch of fucking books out. Uh, and I, I'm uh, incredibly prolific. I do this every single day. Uh, and uh, this is my eighth novel right here. I have one that's being considered uh, by a traditional publisher right now. Uh, one that uh, I tried really hard to get uh, picked up by an agent, but they were not having it. And then uh, what was the, uh, and one other one that I need to rewrite. Uh, actually, and then uh, maybe two or three incomplete novels. So there's a lot of uh, work to be done. All right, so what do I want to say here? She touched the surface tentatively, afraid it would be boiling hot, but the water was only slightly warmer than the river around it. Uh, yeah, we don't need around it. The meteorite had sunk deep. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want her to have to put her head under the water to get this thing. Uh, so realistically... A meteorite that hit that hard uh, would most likely have sunk like really deep into this mud bank. She would not be able to just pull it out of here, but I don't want her to have to come back with a fucking shovel. So we're.
Yeah, I wonder how reluctant she would be to get back into that fucking water after uh, uh, all that uh, pain and whatever. It was a sphere, smooth and hot, but not too hot to handle. For a moment, she had to put her head underwater. Uh, yeah, let's... A meteorite, a piece of space right there. Okay, let's um, let's read uh, this whole paragraph that we've done. Freya was soaked and shivering, but she had to look. She waded out to the sandbar, carefully planting her feet with each step. She had no intention of slipping back in ever again. The crater had filled with dark water. She touched the surface tentatively, afraid it would be boiling hot, but the water was only slightly warmer than the river. The meteorite had sunk deep, she benched down and reached in until her ear was against the water's surface. At last, her fingertips touched something solid. It was a sphere, smooth and hot, but not too hot to handle. She dug it out and brought it back to the picnic table, clutched in both hands. A meteorite, a piece of space, right there in her hands. She could not, <clears throat> she could barely believe it. In the moonlight, it was dark and pitted, like a small cannonball about three inches across. So three inches uh, across, that's a baseball. Um, and I think later we'll uh, make the baseball comparison. Um, but uh, I, I didn't think I could uh, fit in the word baseball here. Um, uh, it was almost perfectly round. Uh, she squinted, wishing there were more light. It was almost perfectly round. The meteorite was almost perfectly round. Her shoulders were shaking, and the toes with the and uh, what's a uh, what's a word for stinging that is more uh, stingy? Uh, the Sara stinging. Uh. Ooh, asperity. I didn't. Oh, like casting aspersions. That's dope. Uh, wounded, irritated. Hmm. Oh, I don't like hurt. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever had lost a fucking toenail, but ooh, ooh, that, uh, that's like dentist uh, level hurt. You know what I mean?
Her shoulders were shaking, and the pain in her toes was stinging and insistent. She needed to get peroxide on them. Wait, does she put on her fucking shoes and socks before she wades out there? I think she does. Let me see. Jeans were shredded. Oh, good. She doesn't. Um, she doesn't put on her shoes uh, before she <laughs> wades out to there. Yeah, man, you got to keep track of uh, shit like that. Because she. Okay, so, uh, here we go. The crater had filled in with dark water. She touched the surface tentatively, afraid it would be boiling hot, but the water was only slightly warmer than the river. The meteorite had sunk deep. She bent down and reached until her ear was against the water's surface. At last, her fingertips touched something solid. It was a sphere, smooth and hot, but not too hot to handle. She dug it out and brought it back to the picnic table, clutched in both hands.
clutched in both hands to soak in its warmth. A meteorite, a piece of space, right there in her hands. Yeah, we can't. A meteorite. She held a piece of space. Freya could barely believe it. In the moonlight, the meteorite was small and pitted, like a... In the moonlight, the meteorite... <laughs> In the moonlight, the meteorite? What the fuck? In the moonlight, the orb was dark and pitted, like a small cannonball, about three inches across. She squinted. She squinted, wishing there were more light. The meteorite was almost perfectly round. Fucking everything rounds with meteorite. There was an insistent quake in her shoulders, and the stinging in her toes was getting worse. She needed to get warm and get peroxide on all these cuts, or the river might claim her after all. Freya struggled to get her socks and shoes back on. Okay, I like that. Freya struggled to get her so socks and shoes on, wincing as the fabric touched raw flesh. Uh, uh, I feel like flesh is so overused in uh, science fiction. The word flesh. And it's such a, such a creepy word. But, I mean, there aren't a lot of great alternatives. Uh... Flesh. Some great metal songs uh, that make use of this guy. Oh, let's, let's look up the fucking period. That's exactly what I wanted. Oh, what? Oh. Um. <laughs> well, I'm definitely not going to say adipose tissue. Fuck that. No, now I gotta do flash. It's the only thing that fucking works. I'll just make sure when I'm reading the audiobook, I'm just like wincing as the fabric touched raw flesh. <laughs> Hell yeah. This book is fucking metal. She wedged the meteorite. Okay, this is a new paragraph. She wedged the meteorite into the binoculars case and smug, strung, slung the uh, celestrons over her neck. There was no room for both. Double bass drum, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'll just get. Yeah, maybe I should just have fucking Slipknot playing as the band when I'm doing this editing. That would be a lot uh, better than the fucking piano player. I'm sure my downstairs neighbors would fucking love that. That's all right. I own the building. Uh, let me see. She wedged the meteorite into her binoculars case. All right, hold up. She wedged the meteorite into the binoculars case and slung the celestrons over her neck. There was no room for both. Um. Uh, yeah, I think I used slung over her neck. Uh, what do you call that, like, uh, uh, strap? <sighs> hmm. She wedged the meteorite into the binoculars case and hung the celestrons over her neck from their strap. There was no room for both. She grabbed the bike by the handlebars, telling herself to move faster. Hypothermia was a real possibility. But as she left the clearing, she had to look back. Uh, I don't like butt there. 
As she, as she left the clearing, she had to look back. She couldn't help but look back. The river ran black and smith. What in the world? Let's reread this whole fucking thing. Was well, that not how they're spelled? No, that's not. So there's a lot of, um, it's like a clunky line that we have to have here. Um, but I don't want the reader to, um, be, uh, be like, why don't you just leave the fucking binoculars behind or whatever? Cause they're like her dad's binoculars. They're important to her. Um, but I didn't want to like invent like some little bag on her bike or some shit like, I don't, I don't know. Um, it's not worth getting too bogged down in this. But I'm, I'm aware that this is kind of like a, a clunky situation right there. She wedged the meteorite into the binoculars case and hung the celestrons around her neck. There was no room for both in the case. There was no room for both. She grabbed her bike by the handlebars, telling herself to move faster. Hypothermia was a real possibility. As she left the clearing, she couldn't help but look back. The river ran black and swift in the moonlight as if nothing had happened. I almost died here. She hurried up the trail, shivering. I'm very happy with the work that we have done on uh, chapter five. Chapter five is significantly improved. Okay, and because we hit a uh, chapter, um, like I need to, what time is it right now? It is six forty. Okay, so it's been forty-five minutes of uh, doing this. Time to rest the old eyes. But uh, I set up a new thing here. Uh, so potentially, here. Let me just try the shit right here. Uh, potentially, I can. Uh, let's see. I don't know if this will even fucking work. But I think we can swap uh, to a camera uh, for the uh, eye resting cam. All right, there we go. There we go. Fucking iPhones. You're the worst. By which I mean the best. All right, so here we go. So we could potentially do this guy right here. Does this fucking work? So you can see the shit that I'm working with. Uh, I think you're, yeah, you're getting audio from two separate places. So yeah, you can see. Yeah, all these fucking screens happening. Good God Almighty. Uh, 
Uh, so I can't read you there. Uh, <laughs> so people were saying, uh, what do we got here? <laughs> Only Jordan O would say, wow, it's so tidy. Like shit thrown everywhere. Uh, so apparently there's no audio uh, in the other room. I, I'm surprised that uh, the audio didn't come through. Because I didn't have it turned off on the... Uh, uh, it should have been feeding you uh, fucking audio. But, uh, so yeah, it was definitely quiet when uh, when we were pulling the uh, new tech N NDI thing there. It's weird. Um, but yeah, if you couldn't hear me talking, uh, then you missed out on some valuable uh, Zach ZYZ insights there. Uh, I don't think anybody from uh, the other show has gotten to uh, Ganner at the living room yet, so... People are asking how many uh, board games I have. Uh, probably like a thousand. Uh, no, not not like a thousand, but like probably six or seven hundred uh, there. Yeah, everything that I do, I do uh, to an obsessive level. Um, what, what did you say? <laughs> Impulse Builder said that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, man, you got to clean up your room and wash your penis. All right, hold on. Uh, I should have fixed one other thing while I was up, but I did not do that. Uh, well, let's get into it. Uh, let's see if we can get, uh, what time is it now? It's 6.52. Uh, we got about two hours left. Uh, let's see if we can get uh, potentially a couple of chapters uh, done here. If we got three, uh, if we got 2.5. Uh, oh, you need to refresh your video? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like. Uh, that's what I was afraid of, that we would miss uh, Zach insights. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, somebody in the chat tell me, could you hear me talking? Uh, while we were uh, in the living room, if not, then uh, it's kind of a bummer. But it should have uh, it should have relayed audio from the uh, uh, NDI HX feed. Uh, new tech has added this new NDI HX uh, application that you can run on fucking iPhones, and it is amazing. Um, the wireless network here can't quite handle the video transmission, so I'm gonna um, potentially get like a more powerful AP and see if it can handle. Uh, I might just put in an AP and just QoS it, uh, just so that um, it does nothing but uh, stream on these guys uh, and see. Maybe I'll do that um, after uh, like lift and weights and all that there. But uh, whew, yeah, let's so I can do it out here. Um, okay, so Freya biked as hard as she could to stay warm, full of sudden purpose. She wanted to look at the meteorite. The bike shot up the dark hill. And by the time she was up the steep climb, she wasn't cold anymore. Oh yeah, this is this is a bad paragraph. This needs this needs our help, boys. Only we can prevent forest fires. And I am indeed a bad enough dude to save the president. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Freya biked as hard as she could to stay warm.
Mm. Freya biked as hard as she could to stay warm, full of sudden purpose. The binoculars banged against her chest, and the case swung at her side as she fought to get up the big hill. All she could think about was the meteorite. She made it to the summit, and then her bike rocketed downhill. There was no fear this time, only tremendous speed, wind howling around her ears. Hell yeah. At home she put the bike into the garage and saw she'd left Randall's bike off the rack. She lifted it back up against the wall. Uh, she saw she'd left Randall's bike off the rack. She lifted it back up to the wall, wondering again why... Uh, Wondering again why she'd put airs in the tire and why she'd put airs in the tire. Um put airs in the tires. It sounds awful. She lifted it back up against the wall, wondering why she'd put air in the tires. To sell it. To get rid of all this stuff. The house was full of little knives, digging into her everywhere she turned. They had to go or she had to go. She wanted to talk to Lassa about it, but Lassa was in jail. She took the binoculars case to the kitchen, where the lights were brightest, and opened it up. The meteorite was still there. She hadn't dreamed any of this. She put a dish towel on the table so it didn't scratch up the glass, and peered at it under the halogen lights. A black baseball. No, it's uh, it's just a metaphor for uh, memories. Like, um, uh, remember, yeah, you remember the chapter where she was looking at their wall of all the places that she'd been, and it just sucked her into this pit, and she went uh, to her, her mother's closet to try and get the gun. Uh, there were just like a lot of things like that kind of floating around uh, where she just can't deal. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there, um, as you're as you're going through this, you'll see sort of a lot of really unhealthy things that uh, Freya and her mother are doing um, that uh, that are like that, where, uh, well, you'll see. I'm getting into that shit there. It was about the size of a baseball. The exterior was singed black. She took a piece of string, encircled the ball, and extended a tape measure. 75 millimeters. Uh, yeah, actually, I think. Okay. Uh, so 75 millimeters. Then she took the kitchen scale and weighed it. 1.96 kilos. It had to be mostly nickel or iron to be so heavy. She tried to do the math to figure out if it could be a palisite, but she didn't know the density of olivine off of her head. Uh, she should, like, grab a fucking... She'd be really cold here.
Okay, so we too many pronouns here. Uh, so Freya, she, 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 she. At home, Freya. Mm hmm. Okay, the lights were brightest here. Freya, uh, oh, actually, we, when did we... Freya biked as hard as she could to stay warm, full of sudden purpose. The binoculars banged against her chest, and the case swung at her side as she fought to get up the big hill. All she could think about was the meteorite. At the summit, she realized she'd stopped shivering, and she rocketed downhill. There was no fear this time, only tremendous speed and wind howling around her ears. At home, Freya put the bike into the uh, Freya put her bike into the garage and saw she'd left Randall's bike off the rack. She lifted it back up against the wall, wondering again why she'd put airs in the tire. Uh, put airs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess it up every time. At home, Freya put her bike into the garage and saw she'd left Randall's bike off the rack. She lifted it back up against the wall, wondering why she'd put air on the tires. Okay, now we gotta go back um, because. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Okay, so right around here. Uh, I bet that she already put it back up under the wall. And we need to change that. So right around here. She left Lass's bike alone. Um, so it turns out that I already uh, made that consistency change. I've been working on this for so long that I might have made that consistency change like four years ago. Well, not four years ago, because um, but I might have made that um, that change already like a year ago and completely forgot about it. But as you're as you're doing these actions here, um, just one of the biggest parts of editing is uh, sort of object and action permanence. Like if something happens earlier in the story, it needs to be reflected later in the story and nothing will fuck up your suspension uh as badly as that you know we can all think about movies where we've seen like these plot holes like why is this thing that way and whatever editors are the people that do the bulk of that work um because it's very very easy to uh forget about those things it's super easy to um to just uh fuck up that whole deal um people are not really we're not really uh, rigged to have these in giant expansive stories loaded into RAM all the time. Um, so it's, it's a continual fight to uh, make these things work out. Woo, we're flying. Okay, so, um, but yeah, now, now I feel confident that the bike thing is right. Uh, this should be italicized. To sell it, to get rid of all this stuff. The house was full. All right, all right. Let's go there. At the summit, she realized she'd stopped shivering, and she rocketed downhill. There was no fear this time, only tremendous speed and wind howling around her ears. At home, Freya put her bike into the garage and saw she'd left Randall's bike off the rack. She lifted it back up against the wall, wondering why she'd wondering again why she'd put airs in, in the tires. <laughs> Every single time. She lifted it back against the wall, wondering again why she'd pumped up his tires. So this is like an interesting one here. If we change it to where we're using the pronoun his, she's still thinking of, it's still his bike, even though he is gone and moved on. Where are these? 
the cables coming from? Oh, I gotta fix the angle on that thing. You should not see all these cables and shit. I'm so unprofessional. All right, hold up. Let me. There we go. It's still fucky. What's this thing? Oh, okay. That cable was from there. Uh, well, you're just gonna have to fucking deal. Um, <laughs> that makes it so I can't fucking see it. Uh, I'm such a fucking spaz. Okay. Um, pumped up his tires. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's one, one spot where at some point, uh, we might have like a pronoun shift where she stops, uh, thinking about him in that way. Um, we did something like that with survival mode where there's definitely a point, um, where, uh, K stops thinking of the suit in terms of uh, just a machine and the pronouns that they use shift. Uh, and I'm not talking about to like, uh, you know, some fucking made up nonsense pronoun. I hate uh, the use of they as a pronoun. It just feels so awful. Um, but I think I actually use it in survival mode uh, because it's a genderless uh, AI cyborg. Anyhow, uh, we are wasting time. At, at home, Freya put her bike into the garage and saw she'd left Randall's bike off the rack. She lifted it back up against the wall, wondering why she'd pumped up his tires. To sell it. To get rid of all this stuff. The house was full of little knives, digging into her everywhere she turned. They had to go or she had to go. Freya wanted to talk to Lassa about it, but Lassa was in jail. She should have gotten out of her wet clothes immediately, but the desire to look at the meteorite was all-encompassing. Instead, she grabbed a bathrobe and wrapped it around herself, then rushed to the kitchen table with the binoculars case. The lights were brightest there. Freya took off the binoculars and set them on the table, and then she opened up the case. The meteorite was still there. It hadn't been a dream. Okay. The meteorite was still there. It hadn't been a dream. She put a dish towel on the table so it didn't scratch up the glass, and peered at it. and peered at the orb under the halogen lights. It was about the size of the baseball. The ex exterior was singed black. She took a big, uh... Hmm. Freya took, uh... Let's have this paragraph of observation. Yeah, that's that's where that paragraph should break. Freya put a dish towel on the table so the meteorite didn't scratch up the glass and peered at the orb under the halogen lights. It was about the size of a baseball. The exterior was singed black. Freya took a piece of string and circled bo- Okay, that's where if we Freya up above. It must be she here. She took a piece of string and circled the ball and then extended a tape measure. <laughs> Alright, what, what if I didn't bobble the entire sentence there? It was about the size of a baseball. The exterior was singed black. She took a piece of string, encircled the ball, and then extended a tape measure. 75 millimeters. Then she took the kitchen scale and weighed it. 1.96 kilo... Uh, let's do kilograms. 1.96 kilograms. The meteorite had to be mostly nickel or iron to be so heavy. She tried to do the math to figure out if it could be a palisite, but she didn't know the density of olivine off of her head. But she didn't know the density of olivine. She got her phone, and after a few minutes of tapping and plugging things into the calculator, she decided it was probably just a big chunk of iron. It was exceptional, though, in that it was so close to perfectly spherical.
It was exceptional, though. Almost perfectly. Yeah, we don't need it. Okay, the meteorite had to be mostly nickel or iron to be so heavy. She tried to do the math to figure out if it could be a palisite, but she didn't know the density of olivine. She got her phone. Mm -hmm. There we go. Freya tried to do the math to figure out if it could be a palisite, but she didn't know the density of olivine. She got her phone, and after a few minutes of tapping and plugging things into the calculator, she decided it was probably just a big chunk of iron. He was exceptional, though. Almost perfectly spherical. Hell yeah, had big chunks of iron. She wished Randall had a bandsaw in the garage so she could cut it in half and look at its core. Perhaps it was a shame Randall, uh, ba 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 Freya would have loved to cut the meteorite in half and take a look at its core. Perhaps she ought to... They, uh, let me go. She wondered if she should bring it to someone first. Did they x-ray meteorites, or was there some other kind of imaging they use? She scraped at the fusion crust with a fingernail, but it was too tough to give. She picked up the meteorite and held it. This was in space an hour ago. She set the meteorite back down on the dish towel, remembering that she'd been in, a, in the... Uh, She set the meteorite back down on the dish towel, and remembering that she'd been in the river an hour ago, finally stripped off her still damp clothes and got in the shower. We don't need still. She got the water as hot as she could stand and kept ratcheting up the heat until she couldn't take it anymore. And so, uh, yeah, this, this definitely happens. I had a, uh, girlfriend who would just get in the shower and turn up the heat and she would come out completely lobsterfied. And, uh, then we would fuck and the residual heat would be just like glowing in her skin the whole time. Uh, yeah, life is magical. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> some people actually do do that. They lobsterfy themselves. Mm. Shout out to the Dark Mage. She set the meteorite back down on the dish towel, and remembering that she'd been in the river an hour ago, finally stripped off her damp clothes and got into the shower. <laughs> I only lobsterfy when I'm taking niacin. Oh, is that that shit that makes your skin burn? I forget what the fuck niacin is all about. I think I is, is this like a it's like an antibiotic or something like that. Hold on. What does this shit do? Oh, it's a vitamin B3. Uh, reduce the risk of heart attack. Charles says that it's detoxifying. Yeah, and itch in so many words. I gotta tell you, you know, like Charles is a uh, brilliant performer, but I don't know about taking health advice from young Charles. You know what I'm saying? He does not have a degree in... Uh, anything but the World Trade Center. He's got a degree in WTC, but that's it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Like, go along with this shit and try it out and everything. Uh, just stay objective, nigga. Like, um, uh, anything that makes your skin burn is probably not good for you. Take it from me. Uh, <laughs> She set the meteorite da back down on the dish towel. An hour ago, she'd been in the river. She finally stripped off her damp clothes and got in the shower. She
She turned the water as hot as she could stand and kept ratcheting up the heat until she couldn't take it anymore. When she emerged... When she emerged in a cloud of steam, she was as red as a lobster. The mirror was all fogged up and she swiped at it her with her towel and stared at herself through the smudgy moisture. Okay, this... Way too many words. Uh, something gratifying about niacin flushes, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm like coming up on the point of the year where I want to uh, uh, do some drugs. Right? It's been a long time since I've done drugs. And uh, usually I don't do them because I can't write if I'm doing drugs. Uh, but there are definitely some, um, some segments of this book where I want to pierce the veil. Uh, and uh, I, I feel like um, it would be a good time. Maybe I'll go to Amsterdam at some point. And just get super duper fucked up, man. Uh, wait, I see Keiku in the YouTube chat, but it hasn't been relayed there. Uh, the pen is mightier than the sword. Shoutouts to Keiku right there. It's very, uh, uh, take niacin and LSD. Huh. I don't want my fucking skin to be on fire when I'm taking LSD. You know what I'm saying? I really do not. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like a little afraid to take LSD again. I haven't taken it since I was in my very early 20s. Uh, and like, you know, there's there's a lot of pain in uh, in that. All right, uh, but let me let me fix this uh, paragraph here. Freya set the meteorite back down on the dish towel. An hour ago, she'd been in the river. She finally stripped off her damp clothes and got in the shower. She kept ratcheting up the heat until she couldn't take it until she couldn't take it anymore. When she emerged in a cloud of steam, she was red as a lobster. The mirror was all fogged up, and she swiped at it with her towel and stared at herself through the smudgy moisture. Too thin and bony, breasts too small, zit off center on her forehead. Hair a mess from being toweled off. One eye black, the other with a dark well under the eye. Both red right uh, Both red. Too thin and bony. Breasts too small. Zit off center on her forehead. Hair a mess from being toweled off. One eye blacked, the other with a dark well under the eye. Both red. Missing two toenails. She tried to picture what she would look like if she had drowned, deathly white from the cold, slowly turning green, then black in the river. I can never tell anyone. They would lock her up for sure, put her in a padded room, They would lock her up for sure, put her in a padded room at Spring Harbor where she couldn't hurt herself.
Do they still pump people full of fucking Thorazine? Um, whatever. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a child who uh, gets everything that she knows about mental health from television. So, uh, like, I'm, I'm willing to guess that there might be some fucking Thorazine involved. Uh, they would lock her up for sure. She'd be thrown in a padded room at Spring Harbor Mental Hospital and pumped full of Thorazine. She couldn't even tell Betty. Betty might tell her mother. And then her mother. Uh, what's a Chinese name? What's a Chinese name? Uh, uh, oh, I like Huifang. Kind and fragrant. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna call our land. Uh, no, no, not land. Uh, let's go. We fine. Uh, let me see. Do I play Dota on a Mac? I only play League of Legends, to tell you the truth. Uh, I can never really get into Dota. Uh, and I don't have... I guess I could get a hold of a Mac that was strong enough to play Dota. But why? You know? I just... I don't even fucking like League at the moment, by the way. Ever since they got rid of the 3v3 mode, it fucking sucked. Oh, are you huffing either right now? Hell yeah. <laughs> Chun Li. <laughs> Betty might tell her mother, and then Huifang would call Lassa. No one could know. Wrapped in a towel, Freya scurried across the freezing house, leaving damp. Wrapped in a towel, Freya scurried across the house, leaving damp finger... Er, Wrapped in a towel, Freya scurried across the house, leaving damp footprints on the hardwood, and then put on some pajamas in her room. If her mother saw her doing that, she would go insane. Freya's room, like the rest of the house, was a part of Lassa's domain. Her mother decided what could be on the walls, what furniture there would be, and how it could be arranged. Her mother decided what could be on the walls, what furniture she had, and how it could be arranged. It had to be kept perfectly neat at all times. Everything had to be organized, even places you couldn't see, like dresser drawers in the closet. Freya had complained once that she felt like she lived in a hotel, and Lassa had smacked her hard enough that she never said anything like that ever again. Oh, uh, yeah, the ever, like, seems to self-insert itself there. Um, let's try it without it. Freya complained once that she felt like she lived at a hotel. And Lassa had smacked her hard enough that she never said anything like that again. There was a money tree in the corner of the room they had got when Freya was born. No, oh, why is that there? Fr mm. How long do money trees live? Many years. Uh, we fang either. Why, why doesn't it tell me the lifespan? How long they live?
Okay, so they can last a long, uh, as long as 20 years. Okay, cool. There we go. Yeah. Um, as, as long as they, I just didn't want to like have a tree where they, they got it when she was born and then it wasn't still alive. Okay. Uh, there was a money tree in the corner of the room that Randall had bought shortly after Freya was born. She was responsible for watering it every week and turning it. It had been repotted seven times, and now uh, it stood almost seven feet tall. The trunk was braided, and Randall had always called it Yggdrasil, or... Yggdrasil, but he was the only one. To Freya, it was just a plant that she had to take care of. She wasn't a green thumb like Randall. That was a sad thing. Uh, oh, why would you just say... Uh, oh, shout outs to Shit Fun, who said, Get it, Zach. I will indeed do that very same thing. Thank you, sir. Mm. <sighs> we pumping. Mm. She wasn't a green thumb like Randall. And neither was Lassa. Randall had loved myth. Um, Randall had loved myth. How the fuck do you say that? Uh, let's start over. There was a money tree in the corner of the room. Randall had bought. Oh, no, that. Read it right. There was a money tree in the corner of the room. Randall had bought shortly after Freya was born. She was responsible for watering it every week and turning it. It had been repotted seven times and now stood almost seven feet tall. Now stood taller than Freya. The trunk was braided, and and Randall had always called it Yggdrasil. Uh, I think it's Yggdrasil. Here, let's let's find out. No, it would go through the HDMI audio. I wouldn't hear this. Yggdrasil. Fucking hell! All right. Pronounce Yggdrasil. Here's what I found. Okay. Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil? All right. I'll fucking take your word for it. That doesn't sound right to me. Yggdrasil. Fucking plants. Yeah, they're medicinal. They fucking medicinal money trees. I wish I'd do an ad for that. <laughs> medicinal money tree it has been a long time since a money tree was posted and I miss talking to those weird Asians that like want them so badly I don't know why medicinal money trees yeah you smoke them dude yeah it makes you see all kinds of colors <laughs> there was a money tree in the corner of the room Randall had bought shortly after There was a money tree in the corner of the room Randall bought the same week Freya was born. She was responsible for watering it. <laughs> see colors that only animals can see? Oh, that's fucking ingenious. I love that. Um, there was a money tree in the corner of the room that Randall had bought the same week Freya was born. She was responsible for watering it every week and turning it. It had been repotted seven times and now stood taller than Freya. The trunk was braided, and uh, Randall had always called it Yggdrasil. 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 The trunk was braided, and Randall had always called it Yggdrasil, but he was the only one. To Freya, it was just a plant that she had to take care of. She wasn't like a she wasn't a green thumb like Randall, and neither was Lassa. Randall had loved myths and legend, but no one else in the family had. Freya had caught Lassa's aggressive disbelief in anything superstitious at a young age. They'd never told her there was a Santa Claus or made her go there. Uh yeah. 
They'd never told her there was a Santa Claus or made her go to church. When she was older, Freya started to sense that Fr I can't fucking talk right. What's going on there? Hold on. Let's let's party up with some of this La Croix. Ugh. Get that carbonation in you. <laughs> Wet the whistle. <laughs> Ugh. It's hard, niggas. Hard out here in the D's. Alright, what do we got here? Randall had loved myths and legends, but no one else in the family had. Freya had caught L Lassa's aggressive disbelief in anything superstitious at an early age. They never told her there was a Santa Claus or made her go to church. When she was older, Freya started to sense that Randall might have liked to do things like have a tree with presents at Christmas or paint eggs at Easter. There was no way Lassa would ever allow it. Still, he always seemed to do something nice for them at the end of the year. A trip somewhere wonderful that would end up pinned on the big map or the bicycles. Freya was hungry, and she wondered if there was anything to eat in the fridge. Freya was hungry, and wondered if there was anything to eat in the fridge. Lassa never shopped. She always worked late and ate at the cafeteria, or was out at dinner with one of her new boyfriends. Freya patted uh, Oh yeah, two Freyas. Uh, let's... Okay, cool. So she has put on socks. Uh, let's see. Freya was hungry and wondered, uh, well, shout outs to the car alarm going off over there. Fucking New York City boys. Oh, yeah, eventually someone will try to, uh, triangulate the load radio hour by driving around, uh, firing off gunshots, uh, and then listening to the stream. But uh, you don't have to. If you want to fight me, I'm ready to go. Just name the place. Freya was hungry and wondered if there was anything to eat in the fridge. Lassa almost never shopped. Never shopped. Freya wondered if there was anything in the fridge. Lassa seldom shopped. She usually worked late and ate at the cafeteria at Hidden Kernu, or went out for dinner with one of her new boyfriends. It hadn't mattered because Freya was never really hungry anymore. She was hungry now.
She's hungry now, though. Hmm. Freya wondered if there was anything to eat in the fridge. Lassa seldom shopped. She usually worked late and ate at the cafeteria at Hidden Kernu. Freya wondered if there was anything in the fridge. Lassa seldom shopped. She usually worked late and ate at the cafeteria at Hidden Kernu, if she wasn't out for dinner with one of her new boyfriends. It hadn't mattered because Freya was never hungry enough to bother with dinner. It hadn't mattered because Freya was never hungry enough to bother with dinner. Nearly drowning had worked up an appetite. Uh, she padded out to the kitchen in a set of thick socks, careful to avoid the wet footprints. Fucking garbage truck fucking me up over here. What are we doing on time? 741. We're about time for me to take an uh, eye break. I think we're just going to get to one chapter today. Uh, but we're we're not hopefully far away from the end of this chapter. Unless it's like a 14 page chapter or whatever. But uh, you'll find out when I find out. I can't fucking remember. Freya wondered if there was anything in the fridge. Lassa seldom shopped. She usually worked late and ate at the cafeteria at Hidden Kernu if she wasn't out for dinner with one of her new boyfriends. Oh, we can't hear the garbage truck? I wish I could, though. No, I can definitely hear it in the headphones. Uh, but Lord only knows what kind of speakers you have happening over there. Big Jordan. Oh, shout out to everybody who's watching this shit, by the way. Whether you be on that Peniscope or uh, on DLive or Twitch or whatever there. I, I love being on like 15 different platforms so I can pretend to the people who are like, how come there's only four people watching this? Uh, that there are like many more channels happening. Uh, uh, <laughs> they're coming out of a cheap flat screen a day in the life of Jordan we gotta get you back into uh, like some kind of music man you know I want I want you to go further in life than uh, uh, just sitting in a room with the floor carpeted with coat hangers and uh, listening to me out of a 23.4 inch Sanyo or whatever the fuck alright but uh, for now we gotta get to this she usually worked late and ate at the cafeteria at Hidden Kernu if she wasn't out for dinner with one of her new boyfriends. It hadn't mattered because Freya was never hungry enough to bother with dinner. She was hungry now, though. Nearly drowning had worked up an appetite. She padded out to the kitchen in a set of thick socks, careful to avoid the wet footprints. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The fridge was a stately lunar gray. <laughs> oh, that's why it's moon gray. The fridge was a stately moon gray, and inside it was just as desolate and barren. There was baking soda in a special glass container, so that Lassa could be spared the horror of having a box and Arvin hammer in her refrigerator. All right, that's a, it's a good concept, but uh, holy shit, what a mouthful. The, the fridge was a stately moon gray, and inside it was just as desolate and barren. There was, a, there was baking soda in a special glass container, so Lassa could be spared the horror of having a box of Arvin hammer in her refrigerator. There were cans of the Ensure Lassa drank for breakfast each morning, but Freya hated them. They tasted like chalk. There was literally nothing else except for Pellegrino, some lemons. How do you spell Pellegrino? Mm. 
Yeah, there's two L's. There was literally nothing else except for Pellegrino, some withered lemons, and a jar of mustard. It was so strange to be hungry. Tonight was the first real exercise she'd gotten in months. Freya guessed she could choke down and ensure, but even with her stomach making demanding noises, the idea seemed unappealing. I love the word repugnant. So in the, um, in the epigraph of uh, Zanonink, there is a uh, French, uh, a, a bit of a, a French poem uh, from Baudelaire, uh, from The Flowers of Evil, um, where he talks about um, how uh, what is repugnant becomes desirable. Ah, oh, you know, I, I seldom wish that I could uh, read French, but uh, oh, it's fucking fantastic. Uh, anyhow, yeah, I highly recommend even the English translation. Uh, if even if you're not like a poetry person, he is just like he was goth before it was cool to be goth. It's like a fantastic fucking uh, book of poetry. Highly recommend. Uh, at some point, maybe I'll do like a reading where I just read out the English of it. Um, but uh, I, you know, I, I need a, a slightly larger audience before I bother doing nerd shit like that. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I'll do any any time that I can get about a hundred people to watch something, I'll do it. And that's a that's my. Uh, my hard and fast desire. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, it was so strange to be hungry. Tonight was the first real exercise she'd gotten in months. Freya guessed she could choke down and ensure, but even with her stomach making demanding noises, the idea seemed repugnant. It dawned on her that she could order food. Whatever she wanted. It dawned on her that she could just order food. It dawned on Freya that she could order food. Lassa wasn't around to give her a hard time about eating junk. She could even order Chinese, and there would be no lecture about MSG or unfair labor practices or anything. Wow, her mother is such a bitch. Ah, oh, I'm really looking forward uh, to making the Lassa character a little bit better. There's some like very weak choices uh, made in terms of Lassa uh, later in this book, and I really want to uh, make them into stronger choices, um, if it's possible. Uh, maybe we can, maybe we can't, or whatever. But uh, I, I would love to just have her be a deeper character. Um, and there are there are a lot of directions that we can pot potentially go later in the book that are just really interesting that um, we'll see. Um, but um, she's a little threadbare at the moment, and that's part of why we're doing this rewrite. It dawned on Freya that she could just order... Uh, could, could order food... It dawned on Freya that she could have food delivered. Lassa wasn't around to give her a hard time about eating junk. She could even order Chinese food. And there would be no lecture about MSG or unfair labor practices or anything. How much of her problem was just living with Lassa? The thought struck her. Freya was so used to dealing with her mother, she hadn't really stopped to consider what her life would be like without her.
Freya was so used to dealing with her mother, she hadn't really stopped to consider what life would be like without her. Freya was used to dealing with her mother. She hadn't really stopped to consider what life would be like without her. The last time she had seriously wanted to run away, she was 11 years old. Love it. That's so much better. Freya was used to dealing with her mother. She hadn't really stopped to consider what life would be like without her. The last time she had seriously wanted to run away, she was 11 years old, and Randall was still around. She just sort of surrendered, told herself she was too sensible for that kind of thing, and accepted her place in the flock. For a moment, she was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and make an account and everything, and not wanting to actually talk to... <laughs> For a moment, uh, okay, that's, we don't need that to be for a moment. Freya was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and make an account and everything, and not wanting to actually call the restaurant and talk to somebody on the phone. Oh, oh, that, I can't fix that fucking sentence. It's too much for me. Uh, uh, because all that data needs to be there, right? Freya was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and make an account. No, uh, okay, yeah, maybe we just take out, out the and everything. Maybe we can just chip at the bones of this motherfucker. Freya was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and make an account. Oh, yeah, we just have to take away the make an account thing. I know, it's... <sighs> Freya was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and a not wanting to actually call the restaurant and talk to someone on the phone. Oh. See, we could we could take out so much bullshit. See, I thought, I thought that was a hill that I could not climb, but it turns out you can do anything if you set your mind to it. And it's actually a very trivial task, and you were just being a big pussy all along. Real talk. Freya was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and not wanting to talk to someone on the phone. Not wanting to talk one out. But then she found they didn't have the poo-poo platter on their online delivery menu, and she had to call anyway. She had to repeat herself about four times to get the woman on the phone to agree to make sure that... Uh, 
Um, she had to repeat herself. Alright, Freya was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and not wanting to talk to someone on the phone. Not wanting to talk one out, but then she found they didn't have the poo-poo platter on their online delivery menu, and she had to call anyway. The, one, the woman on the line didn't speak English well, and it took about four tries to get her to understand that Freya needed the delivery driver to have change for a hundred. Finally, she set the phone down. Um, alright, I, I just I wasn't actually concentrating on that paragraph. Freya was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and not wanting to talk to someone on the phone, not wanting to talk one out, but then she found they didn't have the poo-poo platter on their online delivery menu, and she had to call anyway. She had to call Panda Pete's anyway. The woman on the line didn't speak English well, and it took about four tries to get her to understand that Freya needed the delivery driver to have change for a hundred. Finally, she set the phone down and wonders it. Finally, she set the phone down, and then she wondered if there was anything you were supposed to do for lost toenails other than put Neosporin and a Band-Aid on it. As she was searching for it on her phone, she heard a loud crack, and she looked around, wondering if one of the windows had broken. Immediately, her flat... Uh, okay, oh, cool. No, oh, that, that makes sense. So after the shower, she should be uh, doing all the peroxide and everything like that. Yeah, it's weird how many, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it feels like strange to include, uh, uh, hold on, what do they call triple antibiotic? Yeah, triple antibiotic ointment. Yeah, well, they come in little packets. You can get them in a tube, too. Although the tube um, is a bad idea uh, because that shit, it goes bad pretty quick. Um, but yeah, I got, I've got, i got, like, God, the last time was in a motorcycle accident where I was, like, so fucked up, I couldn't walk. And I had to get, like, one of those Amazon people to come over and, like, deliver uh, fucking Gatorade and uh, antibiotic ointment and everything. I was, I was 
hurting for certain after that one there. Like I dislocated my hip. I was in shock. Shit sucked. Shout out to Too High to Comply right there. She spent a while rinsing all our cuts with peroxide. The toes hurt so bad she nearly started crying again. She slathered them in triple antibiotic ointment and wrapped them in band-aids. Wound up in a towel. Wrapped them in band-aids. Wound up in a towel, Freya scurried across the hallway, leaving dark... Uh, there we go. Cool. Uh, did we fuck up anything else? She spent a while rinsing all her cuts with peroxide. The toes hurt so bad she nearly started crying again. By the way, uh, don't use peroxide uh, for that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not the right uh, thing to wash out wounds with. But I'm not going to um, say the right thing here because I don't want to research what the right way to uh, triage that shit is. Hmm. I've done enough. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit's about to get real. We don't just have a fucking chapter of rewarding Chinese food, boys. Mm.
Mm, 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 mm. Okay. On the kitchen table, her meteorite had a vertical crack in it. Oh, well, let's, let's get, uh, let's start back up here. Freya was torn between not wanting to downloading, Freya was torn between not wanting to download the ordering app and not wanting to talk to someone on the phone. Not wanting to talk one out, but then she found they didn't have the poo-poo platter on their online delivery menu. She had to call Panda Pete's anyway. The woman on the line didn't speak English well, and it took about four tries to get her to understand that Freya needed the delivery driver. Wait, what the, what the fuck is Restream bothering me? In the middle of a fucking thing. I suck a dick, Restream. No, shout out to Restream. This shit is amazing. Um, uh, start over. Not wanting to talk went out, but then she found they didn't have the poo-poo platter on their online delivery menu. She had to call Panda Pete's anyway. The woman on the line didn't speak English well, and it took about four tries to get her to understand Freya needed the delivery driver to have change for a hundred. Change for a hundred. That's fine. After the call, Freya wondered if she'd done the right thing for her lost toenails. As, as she was searching on her phone, she heard a loud crack. She thought one of the windows had broken. Her first thought was that a window had broken, and her mind flashed forward to the gun in Lassa's closet. Her eyes darted around the room, but no one was trying to break in. Her eyes darted around the living room to the front door, but no one was trying to break in. On the kitchen table, her meteorite had a vertical crack in it. As she watched, it split into two silvery halves, each resting on the dish towel. The broken face pointing upward. Real. Shout out to broken faces. On the kitchen table, her meteorite had a vertical crack in it. As she watched, it split into two silvery halves and came apart. Each half settled, settled onto the dish towel with the broken face pointing upward. At the center of the half to her right, there was a gleaming violet stone embedded in the nickel. At the center of the half to her right, there was a gleaming violet sphere embedded in the nickel, about 25 millers across. The opposite half had a depression, perfectly centered. It was like an avocado pit. The sphere caught the light. It was the slightest. Uh, the sphere caught the light. It was the slightest bit translucent, so that it seemed almost a glow in the bright halogen lights. The shell was nickel. The shell looked like nickel. Freya looked closer, wondering if she might see Widmastatin patterns, but then she remembered they only appeared after a meteorite was acid etched and polished. She reached out to touch the sphere. Freya reached out to touch the sphere. Freya reached out to touch the violet sphere. She was surprised when it yielded slightly to her fingertip, as if it were a grape. But when she pressed it again, it was hard and rigid as glass. 
She wanted to see it closer, and carefully pulled it from the meteorite between two fingers, holding it to the light. It came loose easily. She wanted to see... Very carefully, Freya pulled the orb from the shell between two fingers. Very carefully, Freya pulled the orb from its shell between two fingers and held it up to the light. It came loose easily. Now it seemed completely opaque. Had it grown darker? Just barely. She thought she could feel it vibrating, and she set it down on the table on the... on the glass tabletop to observe it closely, but it didn't visibly move. She was so excited she could barely breathe. She couldn't identify the mineral. The unusual round meteor that had split perfectly in half, the polished spherical core. What if it wasn't natural? What if this was a relic of an alien civilization? She snapped a hundred pictures of it on her phone from every possible angle. If only Randall were here. She was searching on her phone, trying to find any other meteorite that had a core like this one, and found nothing. She found an article about a meteor that had been observed in 2006 that was going... Uh, no, this is... This doesn't fucking belong here. If only Randall were here. She was searching on her phone, trying to find any other meteorite that had a core like this one, and found nothing. While she was searching, she turned up an article about a meteor that had been observed in 2000, 2006 that had been going at 300 kilometers per second when it struck the Earth's atmosphere. Its trajectory was so abnormal, the astronomer who observed it thought it was possible it had come from another galaxy. She picked up the sphere, her mind reeling with a thought. Another galaxy millions of light years away. Of course, it... As she held the sphere, Freya felt a sharp prick against her palm, and she nearly dropped it. As she held the sphere, Freya felt a sharp prick against her palm, and she nearly dropped it in surprise. Thankfully, she held on and set it carefully back on the dishcloth. When she looked at her palm, there was a minute dot of blood. How had it done that? The sphere was smooth and round. With the end of a pencil, she turned the sphere over, looking for any sign of a protrusion or jagged edge, but it was featureless all over. A cold, wrenching fear settled over her.
How had it done that? The sphere was smooth and round. With the end of a pencil, she turned to... Prodding it with the eraser end of a pencil, she turned the sphere over looking for any sign of a protrusion or jagged edge, but it was featureless all over. Her empty stomach turned with fear. Her empty stomach twisted with fear. She was toying with a rock from outer space. She'd picked it up with her bare hands. What if it was radioactive? What if it was alien technology? She set it back on the dishcloth. Uh, hello? She asked the rock, but of course nothing happened. She ought to take it to the authorities, but if she did... This was a big deal. Freya realized she should take the meteorite to the authorities. She would have to explain why she was at the Riverside Park in the middle of the night. If she did, Lassa would get the full story out of her. It was inevitable. When it, She could see when Freya was lying or holding something back, and she never stopped prying until she ferreted it out. Um, hello? She asked the rock, but of course nothing happened. She waited a few moments to see if she would suddenly keel over from poison, but no such luck. This is a big deal. Freya realized she should take the meteorite to the authorities. She would have to explain... But then she would have to explain why she was at the Riverside Park in the middle of the night. If she did, Lassa would get the full story out of her. It was inevitable. She could sense when Freya was lying or holding something back, and she never stopped prying until she ferreted it out. Freya wondered if she could anonymously send it to some researcher. Freya wondered if she could anonymously send it to a scientist, but would they even know what it had? What they had? Ugh. Yeah, you can tell I'm, I'm like getting tired. I'm good for like about uh, a couple hours of this and like already. Oh, it's 822 already? Fuck me. It's been like two and a half hours of editing. We out here, boys. Mm. But the show must go on. I want to finish this chapter. Freya wondered if she could anonymously send it to a scientist, but would they even know what they had? It might lie forgotten in a box forever. She wished she had a microscope here to take a look closer look at the... She wished she had a microscope here to take a closer look at the orb. Tomorrow she could go back to school and use the biology lab. Why could? Why would it be cowed? Fucking idiot. Pages. God. 
fucking machine is insufferable. But yeah, let's keep in mind my my own spelling is atrocious. Freya wondered if she could anonymously send it to a scientist, but would they even know what they had? It might li it might lie forgotten in a box forever. She wished she had a microscope here to take a closer look at the orb. Tomorrow she could go back to school and use the biology lab. Then she remembered she was supposed to stay home. Forget that. She decided she would go back to school with the rock after she bailed Lassa out. She hadn't done anything wrong. She would still have a black eye, but she didn't care. She would use the microscope in the biology lab and get a better idea of what she was dealing with. Then she would decide if she wanted to tell Lassa about it. If it was radioactive or poisonous or made her sick, what did it matter? Two hours ago, she was about to drown herself. The doorbell rang. It was her dinner. She tipped the delivery man $10. It was kind of a ridiculous thing to order for dinner, and hungry as she was, she could only eat half of it. It wasn't as good as she had remembered be <laughs> The poo-poo platter wasn't as good as she had remembered it being with Randall. But nothing was. Mmm. Powerful chapter end. Powerful. So then we got a Starball chapter next. Hell yeah. Actually, how short is the Starball chapter? It is two pages. <sighs> uh, uh. <sighs> We're going to um, save that Starball chapter for tomorrow uh, so that I can spend some time lifting some weights because I am a fat fuck. Star Ball? You mean a Dragon Ball? No, it's a Star Ball, nigga. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Instead, let's uh, let's go back after uh, this chapter for one more pass. Uh, hello? She asked the rock, but of course nothing had happened. She waited a few moments to see if she would suddenly keel over from poison, but no such luck. This was a big deal. Freya realized she should take the meteorite to the authorities, but then she would have to explain why she was at the Riverside Park in the middle of the night. But then she would have to explain why she was at the Silas River Park in the middle of the night. If she did, Lassa would get the full story out of her. It was inevitable. She could sense when Freya was lying or holding something back, and she never stopped prying until she ferreted it out. Freya wondered if she could anonymously send it to a scientist or something, but would they even know what they had? Send it to a scientist or something, but would they even know what they have? Uh, yeah, let's just check that out. Freya wondered if she could anonymously send it to a scientist. But would they even know? But would they even know what they had? It might lie forgotten in a box forever. She wished she had a microscope here to take a closer look at the orb. Tomorrow she could go back to school and use the biology lab. Then she remembered she was supposed to stay home. Forget that. Freya decided she would go back to school with the rock after she bailed Lassa out. She hadn't done anything wrong. <sighs> Freya hadn't done anything wrong. She hadn't done anything wrong, and Mr. Evers had phrased it like a suggestion she stay home. Freya decided that she would go back to school with the rock after she bailed Lassa out. She hadn't done anything wrong, and Mr. Evers had only suggested she stay at home. It wasn't a demand. She would still have a black eye, and people would gawk at her, but she didn't care. She would use the microscope in the biology lab and get a better idea of what she was dealing with. Then she would decide if she wanted to tell Lassa about it. If it was radioactive or poisonous or made her sick, what did it matter? Two hours ago, she was going to drown herself. The doorbell rang. It was her dinner. She tipped the delivery man $10. It was kind of a ridiculous thing to order for dinner, and hungry as she was, she could only eat half of it. 
The poo-poo platter wasn't as good as she had remembered it being with Randall. But nothing was. Real. All right, so uh, thank you to Jordan O and Spiffy Wa and PCAP and all the new people getting up in this shit. Oh, I think we made some good progress today. We're up to chapter seven. We are uh, fucking 55 pages out of uh, like about 700 into this. Um, so, <laughs> so we're about 1 14th uh, of the way through this motherfucker. So uh, yeah, it's like a fun chapter. You can sense that shit is heating up in uh, the world of Gravid. So, uh, yeah, uh, everybody be safe out there. Uh, enjoy your day. Thank you for tuning in and everything. Jordan, no, start working on some music shit or something today, man. Don't let life pass you by. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, join me again tomorrow and every day until this thing is finished, with the exception of uh, me being super sick or sick of it all or uh, fucking being on vacation or some shit like that. All right. Good job, everybody. Penis palm.